Tulsi Gabbard uh, dropping out of the race and endorsing Joe Biden. Now, there's a lot that I said in that, and I'm, and uh, as of now, none of those opinions have changed. I'm still pretty puzzled by her decision, um, you know, and, uh, and I, uh, you know, texted uh, my friend Ron Placone about this, and Ron wasn't surprised, and, you know, to, to some degree, um, I was surprised, but I do remember talking to a friend of mine about, uh, you know, they signed an oath or something to... Uh, support the Democratic nominee, whoever the DNC chooses uh, the Democratic nominee to be. That was something that was that was signed. And, and um, you know, I was hoping that through the Google lawsuit that Tulsi placed, through going after the DNC in the way that she did, pointing out election fraud and, uh, and, and making the focus about election transparency and election integrity the way that she did, um, you know, I was kind of hoping that she would uh, be able to prove that she doesn't need to be a part of this contract anymore uh, because the DNC has not uh, has not upheld their end of the deal. Um, and, and maybe there wasn't a, a, a way to weasel out of the contract in any any sort of way. And maybe weasel is the wrong word, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, but it's still puzzling because to me. You know, a lot of people are like, well, she's, well, she did what she said she was going to do. And she did, right? She didn't run for a third party. She was being honest about that. Um, she did back the Democratic nominee. She was being honest about that. So there's, there's sort of a lot of egg on corporate media's face right now in regards to that, in regards to, uh, you know, Tulsi Gabbard. There's a lot of egg on their face, um, and rightfully so. Uh you know, all, uh, all of a sudden now they've, they, she's become the, the corporate mainstream darling uh, after just a whole fucking year of them attacking and smearing her and lying about her. Um, and now she's sort of become an establishment darling because she, in their eyes, fell in line. Um, and even in, even in my eyes, I feel like she fell, she fell in line, right? Which, which is why I really push forward that idea that, um, you know, people like Tulsi Gabbard and Bernie Sanders and even to some degree Elizabeth Warren are mascots of a movement. They are sort of what you can put on a poster. Um, they become they become the iconography behind it uh, and really uh, the strength and the drive behind these movements is is us, just regular average people uh, we are we are sort of the strength behind the movement. Now, something else popped up last night. Um, you know, as I was kind of getting ready for bed and and doing what I normally do, which is unfortunately I scroll through social media. Uh, that's just the thing that I do. It's it's a shut off button for my brain. I don't have to think about much. Um, I saw Graham Elwood post, uh, who I like. I follow I follow Graham. I watch his show, uh, and. Uh, you know, I saw Graham Elwood post that uh, Jai Gabbard, Tulsi's brother, had posted something about very uh, sort of very angry uh, about basically the Bernie campaign refusing her endorsement. So, uh, you know, and it was very strange that this popped up. Right. Uh, so here I'll, I'll put up the I'll put up the tweet we'll, or, or the Facebook comment um and I think it was in response to Bernie or something. It's, it's kind of a strange story. Um, so here it is. Here's the tweet, right? Uh, Jag Abbott says, thank you for your kind words, sir. Uh, Bernie has treated my sister like shit all the way through this. She tried to endorse him again, and he w has refused her support. Whoever he's getting advice from has done a terrible job. Uh, you go ahead and keep talking about her however you want, but know this. She is going to continue being independent and fighting for us. Bernie isn't the man me and Tulsi once supported 100%. I don't know what happened to him. He refused to take the, he, he refused to take the fight to the establishment like Tulsi continues to do. Aloha to, 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 to you and yours. Okay, so that's, that's the comment. That's the screenshot that's going around. Um, 
Now, this has not been corroborated because according to Tulsi and her, and her campaign, he wasn't particularly very involved in it. Um, Jai Gabbard was not very involved in the campaign. Uh, so this has not been corroborated that Bernie Sanders refused her support. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I can't say one way or the other. Uh, if he did, it super fucking sucks, you know, because she did back him in 2016, um, and she backed him all the way through uh, every single one of the smears that came his way when Elizabeth Warren was lying about Bernie Sanders back in January. That was just two months ago. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard came out and said that, you know, Bernie showed me the utmost respect. He encouraged me to run. And then... Uh, when Hillary Clinton started coming after him, she was there. When the media was lying about him and saying a bunch of shit, she was there for him. You know, and all the way back to 2016, she was there for him. So it's very, very strange that Bernie has stayed silent throughout, um, I will say, a majority of things. Uh, when back in October, when Tulsi was being smeared as some sort of a Russian puppet, and I did a whole video about uh, about the McCarthyism that was being spread at that time, um, and really talked a lot about how Aaron Mate had um, uh, disproved Russia Gate uh, through the Mueller report, uh, at, you know, all of that sort of stuff. He finally came out. Now that was that was at the midst of um, a, and this might have been opportunistic timing more than anything, uh, but that was in the midst of Bernie getting endorsed by AOC, Ilhan Omar. Rashida Tlaib, the squad, so to speak, uh, that, uh, you know, they kind of gained some fame by pushing back against uh, Nancy Pelosi. And, uh, and so, like, getting their endorsement was kind of a big deal. I mean, we all knew that that was coming in October um, because they were all big Bernie supporters back in, back in 2016, and that's what inspired them to run for the House of Representatives. Um, so... That was kind of a no-brainer, but it was sort of a big deal and a big announcement. So they did a big thing with it, and and corresponding with that is when Hillary Clinton called uh, Tulsi Gabbard and Jill Stein uh, Russian assets, um, because Hillary Clinton, if we know anything about Hillary Clinton, likes to jam both of her feet and all of the staff members at CNN's feet. Uh, right into her mouth. That was that's like a thing that I think she's into, um, which uh, which is tough because I you know I don't know if B Bill's uh, really into into that heavy of foot stuff. I might be wrong. I don't know. I don't know what happened on the Lolita Express when he was on, when Bill Clinton was on Epstein's plane twenty six times. I don't know. Maybe maybe he was on that plane twenty six times because he was like this is the only way that I can get normal sex is if I have to purchase it. Who knows? I don't, I don't know. Um, but Bernie, Bernie, all throughout the entire thing, though, part of part of my criticism of Bernie, despite me continuing to be a Bernie supporter and a Tulsi supporter, um, is, you know, I will say that I haven't disavowed either of them. Uh, I'm, I'm upset and disappointed. Um, you know, I was upset and disappointed in 2016 whenever Bernie Sanders endorsed Hillary Clinton finally. That was really fucking bizarre. It didn't make any goddamn sense. And same thing with this. So it's the same feeling. Now, Bernie not saying anything and continuing this rhetoric of, you know, my friend Joe Biden, my friend Joe Biden, the whole thing that he does with the my, you know, I understand being diplomatic and kind of putting on a show so that average Americans think that you guys are all buddy buddy and oh look they're rubbing elbows during the crisis isn't that adorable look at these sure man like I get it the show is important you know it's all political theater uh, policy is boring to talk about so you got to throw some panache and some theater out there um, but this is not helping the cause you know we're we're in the middle of a pandemic. The DNC is is telling people that they need to go vote. Joe Biden is telling people that they need to go vote. Even Bernie Sanders, like Bernie Bernie's statement was it's a personal choice, uh, and we're not going to get mad at any. Well, I get it, 
because you got you got old man Joe telling people to go and the DNC machine telling people to go. So some of the sheep are going to go. Some of the people that only listen to corporate media and, and that's their source of news and that's them staying on the pulse of everything is they're going to go. Um, so how do you get your supporters to go uh, is, you know, kind of making this neutral statement. I just think it's irresponsible to be running a, a primary during um, a global pandemic. I think you should put all of those things at halt. None of that shit matters. Um, you know, so I, I felt like that was a little irresponsible for Bernie to come out and just be like, I don't think this is the right thing to do. Uh, we're not going to take any more campaign donations and we're going to kind of pause our campaign. We're not conceding. We're just kind of putting a pause on things. Um, but, you know, uh, I get it. Ber Bernie didn't, it's, it's tough because I don't think Bernie gave her, um, he just, he just didn't support her throughout this whole thing, except for that one instance, you know, when, when she was barred from the debate stage, uh, he didn't say a goddamn thing. There was no words from either Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if this is true. I don't know if, if the Bernie campaign was like, we don't want you to support us. We kind of just want you to go away and, you know, do your own thing separate from our, our, our way of thinking. Um, if, that, if that is true, it, it kind of, it sucks. You know, um, it, it, it really sucks. So, uh, I hope it's not, but, you know, this is out there now. And a couple of things. If and when Bernie concedes, he is going to throw his endorsement to Joe Biden. Uh, the only person that hasn't endorsed Joe Biden is Marion Williamson. Uh, who I think with, if, if Bernie goes into supporting Joe, so will Marianne, right? Like, that's just what's going to happen. Um, I do not see the Democratic Party getting any progressive voters. I'm not going to vote for Joe Biden. That's, that's just straight up. That's not why I got my citizenship in the first place. That's not why I went through that whole process. To vote for a corporate candidate? No thanks. Um, so, you know... I, uh, I don't know. That's what I think. I don't know. I think, um, I think the Democratic Party is done. I think we're done with the Democratic Party altogether. We're, we're probably going to see a lot more push on the Dem exit, and we're really going to explore how we can start a third party. And there's a lot of other people that have started something like this uh, that I think we can kind of hook into... And, pro and propel forward. Um, and really, if we're going to do something like that, we got to leave egos at the table. We got to fucking put them, put those egos aside and really start thinking about what's, what's the right thing to do. And how do we, how do we get, um, how do we, how do we push back against the corporate machine that is highly corrupt and that owns our election process? How do we do that? That's what, that's what we need to look at. Um, his, Bernie's silence to Tulsi Gabbard, despite the fact that Tulsi was basically given the same treatment that he was in 2016 with a bunch of smears and attacks and um, media blackouts and things of that sort. Uh, really disappointing to see that he wouldn't come out and just make one tweet, one statement, something saying, hey, you know, uh, a sitting congresswoman and, a, and a, uh, a major in the Army National Guard, a medic, an army medic, um, someone that has fought for the people should be allowed to debate considering she is still in the race and changing rules at the very last minute, uh, specifically to take her out is not okay. I would have loved, it would have been great. Uh, that did not happen. Very upsetting. Uh, I don't know if this Jai Gabbard thing is true. If it is, it's also very upsetting. Uh, but like I mentioned in the video, uh, the other, you know, yesterday is this is not the time for us to start attacking each other on the ground level. 
uh, just as supporters of each of these candidates, like stop with the whole, le- you know, calling each other names and attributing weird sexual fantasies to each other. None of that shit is helpful. None of that shit matters. That's not helping us get to the next stage here. That's just putting a lot of, um, a lot of pain and hurt into the world that doesn't need to happen right now. Uh, so I, I very much hope that uh, Bernie supporters and Tulsi supporters can, um, you know, have a little bit of a rational dialogue with each other rather than pitting the progressives against each other. Um, because I think everybody kind of has a very evolving idea of flexibility. You know, Dr. Richard Wolff has even said that uh, words like socialism, progress, things like that, I mean, those have an evolving definition. They, uh, nobody that's within each of these camps um, really has a, uh, has a concrete defined definition. And I think that's sort of the point of it. There, there's a lot of fluidity to these ideas, uh, to, to the philosophies of socialism, to the philosophies of progressivism. And, uh, and right now we need, to, we need to be able to coalesce, come together, uh, and really be able to, to push forward some um, new interesting ideas. So uh, let's do that. Stay safe. Um, take care of each other. Uh, don't hoard shit. Don't do that. Um, you know, if if you got an elderly neighbor, make sure they're they're doing okay. Make sure they're kind of staying educated on what they need to stay educated on. Help them out if they need groceries and and things of that sort. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, uh, there's lots of people that need help not just in the artist community, but in the, in the service industry as well. Uh, if, if you are particularly feel inclined, feel moved uh, by the spirits in the universe or whatever it is, uh, to, to become a sustaining member of what I'm doing or make a one-time donation uh, to what I'm doing, um, pl- please go to ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate uh you can make a one-time donation there you can make a sustaining membership uh, uh patronage there and uh and and you know uh if you can i totally understand it's a tough time for everybody um, but the biggest thing you can do is like subscribe share get the word out about these videos uh show it to people that you know are uh are either interested in this topic or or would like to be interested in this topic would like to get something different um so uh yeah sharing is is a big way to to help uh and hopefully when all this stuff is done i hope to see you guys uh at a live show uh keep up to date by following my website and all of my social feeds uh thank you guys for tuning in and uh we'll see you tomorrow see you on the road